The Five Elements of Letting Go, the podcast. Discussing mental health openly and freely, and learning tools and techniques to find peace. Hey everyone, it's Jared McCollum, and welcome to the Five Elements of Letting Go podcast. I'm excited to start this journey and to share with you uh, some of my friends and people that I respect and share with you their approaches and understanding of mental health and how they're using their tools and techniques to find peace in their life and to manage their own mental health issues. Something I want to become very clear through the process of this uh, podcast and uh, these videos that we're putting up on YouTube is that everyone has mental health concerns and that we all need to talk about it more and be open about it and honest and the more we discuss and share the more we can help one another my concern is that one either mental health is something that no one wants to talk about or it is something that is um you know exaggerated in this uh, like dramatic um you know reality tv format where people are just allowing their emotions and their mental health to just deteriorate and allow it to be something to show and demonstrate <laughs> to the world in unhealthy ways so the the goal throughout this uh, series of uh, podcasts and videos is to provide us with tools and techniques that everyday people are using. You know, uh, some of the people I will be interviewing are professionals, but I don't want to know how they're using it for their patients. I want to know how they're using it for themselves. And so to start off the series, we're interviewing a lot of um, my friends from a very diverse uh, group of professions and experiences in their lives and using that information to help you get a handle on your mental health and to develop coping tools and strategies to understand the purpose of your emotions and to uh, live within the moment and find peace. I'm so excited to present this. I've been thinking of this concept for many years now and uh, we're finally ready to do it. And I'm excited especially for how it can help you. So join us tonight, my first guest, is Tom Barker, and you are going to love him. This is going to be really funny, <laughs> and it's a joy, and uh, I can't wait to have him back. So uh, stay tuned, and here we go. Episode number one of the five elements of letting go. Everyone, this is Jared McCollum. I have my first guest on. Uh, Again, we're working on the title. I don't know if this is going to be the Jared McCollum podcast, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Five Elements of Letting Go podcast. Mm -hmm. This is a podcast focused on mental health and how uh, we can help each other understand mental health better and find tools to support one another and you know, get some peace and, and feel good about things. So uh, I want to introduce my friend and guest here. This is uh, Tom Barker. Hello. Hi. And uh, just a little understanding of my friend here. Um, he does the drive home for the Eagle uh, 100.9 here in Okotoks. So he is a, a sexy radio voice and uh, he's he's a pro at this. So <laughs> I, a little bit intimidated because he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he's also the resident, a resident artist at Neverland. And sure so am. this is a, an organization in Calgary where artists got together, have this amazing studio space and uh, support one another in their art. Uh, he's the resident stylist at uh, Blondie Boutique. Mm -hmm. um, so he knows how to look good and helps others look good. <laughs> and he's also a partner at Concept XYYC. And so my understanding of that is it's an organization that helps throw on amazing events and just if you don't know how to make something awesome, they do and yep. uh, they help you make it awesome. <laughs> and uh, he's also a professional photographer yeah. So he takes photos, uh, <laughs> wedding photos and, and all that stuff, uh, photo shoots. He mostly does lots of shoots of uh, uh, singers and mm -hmm. performers. Mm -hmm. He is very well known in the industry there. 
And uh, I would also call him an LGBTQ advocate. Yes. And um, he's doing a lot locally and getting involved and uh, really proud of him for that. And if you want to learn more about uh, Tom, you go to TomBarkerYYC.com and uh, all his socials are listed on there and all that other stuff. So he is, uh, uh, my background on Tom, I've known Tom for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. I first met Tom, at uh, Zumba class, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he hates it when people bring this up. <laughs> he, he's so done with oh, Zumba. No, I love it. Come on. <sighs> yeah, I can't. I can't give him too hard of a time on that one. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I'm going to leave it on. I think my lights on my phone. There, it is. I'm, I'm, I don't know how it's going to look, but it's we'll just leave extra it. light. I don't extra know. lighting. So <laughs> anyway. Um, Tom is just the sweetest guy. Uh, at that time, how old were you, Tom? Oh, uh, I started Zumba when I was, I gotta think here, 19? Okay. I wanna say 19. Okay. I was either 18 or 19. Yeah, it was something around that line. I think you'd just been out of high school not too long. Mm-hmm. And he was the funnest Zumba, because I, I could never see myself doing Zumba, but mm-hmm. Crystal was really excited about it. So I thought, okay, let's go try it together. No. And um uh this is during the time of gunman style is mm-hmm. that how you say it yeah, i think so yeah yes. G- gangnam style G- gangnam know. style so yeah. that was like the thing mm-hmm. and uh tom actually taught me how to teach it he'd invite me up <laughs> some classes and the two of us would tag team the, just that yeah. song yeah yeah because i wasn't good at the other ones so <laughs> that was my first introduction to tom and just his amazing energy and uh, his laugh and smile, and uh, I, I think he's absolutely fantastic. So I'm really excited to have him here today. Thank you. And to share his wisdom and experience in life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So is that is that an okay intro? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> you know, I couldn't do any better, personally. So, like, that was fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I must say, you know, for, uh, you know, if, uh, you're still a young man. You know, you've you've built yourself quite the arsenal of skills. Yes. At such a young age already. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that, um, you know, one, you are beloved everywhere you go. Everyone adores you. (laughs) And I know that, you know, you just need that opportunity to be able to use your skill set. And uh, I'm so excited to see where it goes. So. Yeah, thank you. Me too. It's uh, I, I don't know. It, it's been a long road, but I'd like to think I have an arsenal of skills. <laughs> <laughs> you for sure but, do. Yeah. Um, so I want to just start asking, um, you know, one, I, I just I want to get a baseline with everyone that we meet with just on, you know, what your opinion is on mental health it's current like a uh, state in the world, how we approach it, mm-hmm. how, how people are, you know, are we talking about it the right ways? Are we talking about it enough? I want your kind of baseline and where you think it's at and, and what do we need? Oh, um, mental health, I think from what I see it as, it, it's very, uh, it's a very all over the place topic with every person. Um, and obviously I talk a lot with people about mental health purely because of the industry that I work in, being in radio, talking with musicians, being in photography, everybody has different perceptions of what different things mean. And a lot of people, uh, almost immediately will bring up mental health with me. Um, where we are in the world right now with mental health, I feel like we're very split and I don't know if this is true or not, but a lot of people either believe that mental health doesn't matter or they believe it's all consuming and it's their entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, and that everybody struggles with it and all of these things. And um, that, that's sort of where I, that's where my perception of mental health is right now because I don't, I've I have never been one to acknowledge my own mental health uh, in my life, even though I have been through the immense struggles that I have. I still never believed that mental health was like a thing that I should really pay attention to and that I should um, really like uh, adopt self care and things like that. So. Um, I don't know. I think that's where my perception sits with mental health right now. We definitely, I believe, need to talk about it for sure, which is why things like this are fantastic. But I mean, I, yeah, that's kind of my perception of it, if that makes any sense. I, I think it does. I think, you know, what you touched on where, you know, there's either those that think it's absolutely no problem at all or mm-hmm. those that are consumed by it. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I teach often 
and I've noticed is you'll have, um, you know, for so long, the previous, you know, a few generations, it was, you don't talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone had any issues, you would put them away somewhere and forget about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't um, something that was given any very little compassion, mm -hmm. very little understanding. Yeah. So you just, if you did talk about it, there's huge risk. Totally. So people just kept their mouth shut mm -hmm. and avoided it. Yeah. Now I think as well, now we've gotten to this point where, um, I think it started with not just social media, but uh, um, reality TV. Oh yeah. Where, you know, honestly, like in a lot of those shows, they had to manufacture drama mm -hmm. because people just aren't like that. <laughs> yeah. Or at least they won't when it started. Mm -hmm. And so they behind the scenes, the producers would do all this stuff to get people all riled up. Mm -hmm. And then I think that, you know, 20 years ago, we, people start to think, oh, oh, that's how yeah. we're supposed to be or that's OK. Mm -hmm. And it ushered in and along with social media and all this, this all consuming like before you couldn't be emotional and now it's all about emotion. Yes, 100%. And so you get people that are consumed mm -hmm. by their emotions. Yes. And then you have the other subset, the old schools that don't even want to talk about it. Yep. And like, if if you have a problem, it's your problem. Exactly. And I really do think it's, we need to find that middle road again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Of, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with our emotions. Mm -hmm. Like one thing I always teach is, you know, your emotions are signals of perceived imbalance. Yeah. So when you're feeling an emotion, it's just telling you how you're, inter you're interpreting your world. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something you have to stop. It's when you go to the extreme then and just say, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to let every emotion out and yeah. I'm going to become a total prima donna yes. and everything is about my emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very true. It's made things a little toxic. Yes, a hundred percent. I often find that those, um, the correlation between those kind of people who don't want to believe that mental health is a thing. And then those people who are all consumed by all of their emotions more often than not, at least for me in my world, it's almost always the relationship between parent and child. And I think that's where for specifically people my age, I feel like that's where they see the disconnect and that's where all of this is kind of coming from because people my age are now all consumed with reality TV, where like you're saying, like producers create insane things that would never actually happen in real life. Gives my generation or gen, what is it? Gen Z? Is that what's below us? I guess so. Yeah. There's millennials and then Z, right? Yeah. So, and I'm a millennial. I think you would be a millennial. I'm generation X. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. By like two years. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm 77. I'm just uh, 77. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. By like two years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's 79 or 80, something I've, like that. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're so arbitrary and they mean absolutely nothing. For real. But there's there's some to it, of course. D something. Yeah. Not, not, it's not these, you know, defined lines. All For real. Like and I, it's so terrible that I, I always, almost, blah, always will correlate it to like parents, children, or like brothers to sisters or whatever else. And I think honestly, I think it's part of the problem yeah. that there's labels put on it, like parents to children or whatever. And you know, but I don't know. Well, but that's the thing, you know, you, we learn every, <clears throat> we, we're, we should be learning everything from our parents, yeah. the, the important stuff. Mm -hmm. But if we're not modeled healthy approaches to emotion, yes, then, you know, we, you know, because again, it's, it's so interesting, but a lot of patients, it's always, but you know, it's always the parent or the sibling, and this is how I've always responded. This is how they respond. Yeah. And it's breaking people, these habits of, okay, yeah, but you don't have to do that mm -hmm. just because your family's always done that or, you know, oh, it's in the genes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's in the kitchen. <laughs> it's in, yeah. in it's in your head. It's these things mm -hmm. that you just learned. Exactly. And, and you can change. You can be different. Mm -hmm. So for yourself, you know, what if you look back at your, you know, growing up, that mm -hmm. relationship with family, what did you notice? Like if you could look back and say, oh, there's a big, you know, like, did you have mental health crisis when you were younger? Did something come up that was an issue? Uh, 
Yes, I mean my sex, my sexual identity, my sexual orientation. These are those are was one massive thing that, and I think part of this reason also is because uh, for for so long I would suppress who I was, like authentically who I was, um, that my mental health was like all over the place because oh, it was yeah. it, you know it was like be you and I mean you like you get it right you you have people in your life who are LGBTQ and it's it's such a mental disaster it's a catastrophic disaster that you have to make sense of over mm -hmm. you know for some people it's 20 years some people it's 18 for me it was 17 um that was like my biggest thing because my parents never sorry mom and dad if you're gonna listen to this uh <laughs> <laughs> i know when i when i do my podcast with my son i'm just like i hope my parents never listen seriously to this yeah you know because i and my my mom did mm -hmm. and i got this really long email yeah. Oh no. Yeah. But you know, she just needed to vent and uh, totally. she did a really, she's very kind about it, but I just, I'm not going to respond. They're exactly. So don't there. worry about them. This is about now. <laughs> okay, very right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so my parents never created a very open environment for us to talk about what was happening or what was going on in our personal lives. And of course, we had moved from England to Canada. And so that was a huge change for all of us. And, um, they are very work focused and they're very, uh, I would say conservative and with like a, I mean, they're ex military. So there's a smattering of uh, crazy in there as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were never really raised to talk about our problems. It was more just kind of like, you know, put up or shut up, get like, get out there and work and be an active member of society and all of these things. So for me, the, the mental health that came along with that with coming from England, leaving all of my friends, coming to a new country in a new school where I then had to make new friends, uh, where I wasn't just gay and big, but I was gay, big and British. So there was then a triple thing, a triple target on my back or so I felt. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I left the public school system and I went to the Catholic school system. And that just, for lack of a better term, fucks you up. Oh my goodness. You know, yeah. <laughs> when you're a, a teen, uh, an LGBTQ teen, um, getting into something like that where they talk so openly about the hate for uh, LGBTQ people. Um, and then you, it just kind of fucks you up for three years and then you kind of leave and you don't really know where to go because they're like, go out into the world and do this and do that. And you're like, oh, but like, I still don't know who I am as a person, right? So that was kind of my biggest mental health thing. And then when I did come out, it wasn't the happiest experience. And then, so you, you deal with the mental health from that as well. And then you kind of deal with it every day. So, and you kind of take each day as it comes. And I don't know, but that, to answer your question in a very long winded term, yeah. that was my kind of biggest struggle. Wow. So I can't imagine, like I know for me as, um, you know, I grew up again in a very strict Mormon home, mm -hmm. and I was not Mormon. I recently learned this about you. Oh, from who? I didn't know that you, I think, or something. Oh, did we talk about it? Yeah, at, at dinner. I don't, okay, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, when you're, you know, and again, I, I'm not going to compare my experience with someone who's coming <laughs> right. out. Yeah. But there's this ideal of how who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, who your parents see you as, mm -hmm. and what the world sees you as. Mm -hmm. And there's this internal fight constantly of, that's not who I am. Yeah. I am not that person. Mm -hmm. I am this, I, like, I feel more like this. Yeah. But you constantly are battling your true self mm -hmm. to fit in with everyone totally. and, and make everyone else happy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, uh, I left the church when I was, you know, 16 for a while. I moved away from home and, um, mm -hmm. you know, lived, but there was still this draw mm -hmm. to I'm still have to be somewhat this and right. it was so you're constantly battling that mm -hmm. and I don't think it's anything like what you and my friends have gone through but I I have an inkling of what that that constant like internal torment of I don't I don't want to be this person mm -hmm. yeah but everyone else there's that expectation and that push and yes you know to me honestly I didn't really embrace that person mm -hmm. until I was in my 40s right you know mm -hmm. um, but I just cannot imagine you know the what kids go through those that go come out mm -hmm. at that age you know like especially when I was in high school mm -hmm. oh my god those poor kids <laughs> yeah. you know but so do you think 
um, like, it's interesting, like the number one cause for like suicides in the state of Utah mm -hmm. is gay kids. I believe it. And like, my, and, and uh, you know, among the number one cause of death for any youth mm -hmm. in Utah is, is suicide. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine, you know, like, I think the number for most places, it's suicide in young, young adults mm -hmm. because they just, I, again, it, your world is so small yeah. when you're that age that if you don't have a role model or some other understanding, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you don't feel you have a choice. Mm -hmm. That's true. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the role models that people that these kids do have are uh, troublesome at most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they look at celebrities and they look at these people who can afford to be who they are because yes. they can afford to choose who's around them. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think these kids uh, who are part of these nasty stats, as far as I'm concerned, they, they, the people who they have around them are really are the straight parent kind of type. They really exactly who we were just talking about. Right. But I think that's, that's what's so sad about it is they'll look at, I, I need to think of a, a role model who I think doesn't help, <laughs> which is, there's a few of them. So people that I'm not going to get a letter from if yeah. I say something bad about them. Well, I'll, I'll like I don't know their <laughs> names, but there's some I see that are, um, and I and again I, I don't, you know I'm not going to describe their this or that because I don't know them. Mm -hmm. But where they're you know they're gay, but they're um, uh, they're troublesome. Yeah, but just their behavior on, on it. Yeah. Um, you know. I don't know. It's 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 hard for a young child to live up to that. Okay, this is what a gay person is supposed to be, mm -hmm. and I can't be that in my world. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to embrace who they really are, but they can't meet up with this standard mm -hmm. that is presented to them on Instagram. Totally. So now it's just a new mm -hmm. um, kind of inner turmoil. Yeah, they're dealing with. And quite often, more often than not, the only way that they see out of it is to kill themselves. Yeah. Right, or to end their life. So. It's, it's a really nasty, vicious circle that I think a lot of kids are, are unfortunately gonna go through. Hopefully if I have anything to do with it, they won't go through it, mm -hmm. but it's unfortunate that that's what is going to happen, right? So did you have any coping <clears throat> mechanisms or things that you did at that age to, um, like if we have any kids that are listening that are in that stage, what worked for you? Uh, <laughs> Was it just um, survival? Uh, honestly, yeah, it was survival of, uh, I think uh, I smoked, I started smoking um, because and anybody listening, please don't smoke, don't start smoking. I'm two days smoke free right now. So this is great, right? <laughs> oh, wrong one. <laughs> nice, no wrong good. one. I don't know which one it is anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I started smoking, but please don't smoke. Um, but I think if anybody is listening and they are going through, th through something like this, um, it's to like find that one thing that truly is yours. And it's that one thing that you, um, like for me, it was my journal. And okay. then every, and every day I would just journal kind of what I was feeling and kind of who my inner person that I kind of felt was um, like, it, my journal was my, my gay heart and mm -hmm. my heart heart was my external heart if that makes any sense. Yeah. There was kind of a different piece of me. And then when I turned 18 and I started going on and I started doing all of these things, um, my friends were a huge support. Um, I came out to a very select few of them first. Um, and they, I was very blessed that I had friends that stuck around and did all that sort of stuff. Um, but when I wasn't around my friends, honestly, it was my journal. Mm -hmm. So journaling is <clears throat> brilliant. Brilliant. You know, it's yeah. such a good tool. Mm -hmm. I recommend it to a lot of patients. Like I used to um, write, you know, two to three pages a day in my journal mm -hmm. in my twenties uh, every day. Mm -hmm. And wow. I think after the end of like two years, I had like uh, these little, uh, this many binders, like, you know, four or six binders oh my God. Yeah. of what I'd write. And I don't journal anymore, Right. but I, there, there's, it, it would be good for me to start yeah. because I do think if you can get those thoughts out of your head before you go to bed, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of lifted that, yeah. that burden from your mind, mm -hmm. but you've also kind of, you know, 
made a decision and a statement to yourself of, okay, this is where I am, this is who I am, and I'm mm -hmm. okay with that right now, yeah. and I'm, I'm good to go to bed now. Totally. Kind of work out those thoughts, because mm -hmm. I, w just thinking about them, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Alan Watts always said that, you know, thoughts are, uh, you know, they're, they're a good servant, but a terrible master. Totally. And yep. a lot of us let our thoughts master us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you can get those thoughts down on paper mm -hmm. and make them make sense, mm -hmm. then there's something about writing where when you create, when you get that down, you're able to take those thoughts and make them your words. Yes. So you have power over them. Mm -hmm. Or if you just let them spin around in your head, yep. they have power over you. Totally. 100%. Once you put them on paper, you can go like burn your journal. You can do whatever you want with it yeah. after, right? But it's, I mean, I still have them because I use them as motivation to continue like really working for kids and for people and for whoever it is out there that even if they're not in the same situation, maybe it is someone leaving the church or whatever. If at some point they find my journals, <laughs> they mm -hmm. see these things, who know? I, I don't know where they're going to go, but if they go somewhere and somebody sees them and it helps them, then they've done their job yeah. for me and personally, mm -hmm. maybe for you, it's burning them or whatever. Yeah. But I, for me, that's, they've done their job. Yeah. So interesting. You're, you're, you spend a lot of time around very creative people, yeah. artists, musicians, all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think their outlets are their art mm -hmm. and, but we're not all artists. Yeah. But we can all write a journal. Mm -hmm. And it is, the, I think it is the same yeah. as writing a poem or writing a song mm -hmm. or painting a painting, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, doing whatever it is that your artistic thing is, is if you don't have those things, mm -hmm. you can always journal. Totally. And mm -hmm. be creative with your words in that way. Yeah. I mean, I, when you, uh, I recently <laughs> was sitting and reading Kurt Cobain's journal. Cause you know oh, how they yeah. published it right yeah yeah and um I, I, I this is gonna sound very weird but um when you're writing a journal imagine somebody's gonna read it mm -hmm. right and imagine that the problems that you're going through somebody else is more than likely gonna go through as well yeah. and by you getting this out and because when i was reading kurt cobain's journal um he was saying things and although me and him are could we could not be further apart as people but there were certain things that i really related with him on and that himself, aside from music and aside from everything else, his journal was the piece of art that spoke to me. Wow. Right? So yeah. there's everybody, your journal is your art. It, it might be very personal to you, but it is art to somebody else. And that's the way you kind of oh. have to look at it, right? That's so cool. <laughs> you know, he's a lot of people don't understand how incredible Kurt was. Ooh, no, they don't. You know, one, he, you know, he often got. Uh, bullied and teased that he was gay. Mm -hmm. And he never, you know, no, I'm not gay or anything like that because he was a huge advocate. Yes. And he was like, you know, and I think a lot of men listen to that music and they think it's this really hard stuff. But if you listen, he's got songs about, you know, <laughs> how rape is so terrible, yeah. how, you know, how to treat women better. Mm -hmm. how, and if you don't really understand, like he was always defending women's rights and, and women and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gay and lesbians. And mm -hmm. he, he basically, I think it was in, I can't remember which album it was. It may have been in Utero or whatever. It was in the liner notes in the cassette, mm -hmm. in the, in the CD that basically said, you know, if you are homophobe or yeah. misogynist, we don't fucking want you yeah. at our concerts. I love that. You know, and just mm -hmm. told them to just just piss off. Yeah. And he was always like that. And you know, whereas today he would have been celebrated. Oh yeah. You know, he would have been an mm -hmm. even bigger star than he was. Yeah. But no one would talk about those things during that time. No, no one. You know, and everything he wrote <clears throat> about was you know, was being an advocate for not only that but also mental health mm -hmm. because he struggled all the time uh, yeah daily yeah. yeah it was i i listened to a podcast actually uh with francis bean cobain um and anybody else out there doesn't know who that is her daughter. daughter yeah and um he she was saying about how uh because she i believe she never met him right yeah yeah she, yeah, she never she was a, a toddler i think she was 18 months old or whatever yeah. when he died but um the only way that she got to know him was through his journals yeah and 
Uh, and then obviously through Cor Courtney Love as well, who's just a friggin' disaster <laughs> oh, in general. Oh, girl. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. But uh, that's she got to know Kurt through there, and she was saying a lot of things about how um, Kurt was such a fearless, uh, uh, kind of like you were saying, he was a fearless def defendant, defender, defender, yeah, um, of so many different social platforms and justice things that mm -hmm. needed to be done, and people don't realize. And she was saying about how. Um, how deep all these kind of deep rooted issues like women's issues and like um lgbtq issues all of this culture is deep in nirvana's music and in uh the things that kurt would do and say and all these things but people would never notice they would never see all of these tiny little things that he would like write or uh these things that he would have that would say like i love gays or whatever it is mm -hmm. um and people would never see that and i think it's the coolest thing in the world. And I think it really shows that people don't know how far deep gay culture and all of these other things go yeah. in in parts of the world. Mm. But there you go. That was mm. another long winded answer. That's so there. cool. But no, you're right. I think, yeah. uh, you know, like your tool was your journals mm -hmm. to make some sense of it all. And, you know, I, I just love that. I think that's beautiful to mm -hmm. have that opportunity to, you know, if you can't talk to anyone else about who you are, and what you're going through, you can share it with yourself. Yeah. But don't let it just bounce around in your head. Yeah. Get it down on the pen paper, or, yeah. you know, or in your computer, so, you know, and or just press record on your record app on your phone. Talk it out and talk it out. Talk like, it out with yourself. Yeah, I think it's it's huge. You know, yeah. I, um, uh, you know, m my best friend came out in his 40s, mm -hmm. and I remember him like he had a, of course. Uh, he was able to afford, afford a fantastic therapist. Right. You know, and one thing is therapist, because um, I think Andy was r really worried about, um, you know, he's just like, I'm gay, but I'm not that, that kind of gay. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And if people don't understand what this is, is there's, mm -hmm. you know, I think those that, especially when are in a closet for a long time or whatever, they have this image of, there's only one type of gay mm -hmm. and you have to be this flamboyant Ugh. pride parade, no, you, you know, don't. like mm -hmm. in your face gay. Yep. And I th that was something that that's one of the hurdles he dealt with because mm -hmm. he didn't, you know, for some reason he didn't see himself as that person. Right. And if I can't see myself that, then I, maybe I'm not a, yeah. a, a real gay. Right. <laughs> Whatever a real gay. Yeah, is. yeah. But his therapist is fantastic, and mm -hmm. he's like, you know, Andy, yeah. you know, you you're gonna be your kind of gay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just gonna be you. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to go to pride parade. You don't have to do all those things. You don't have to be no. that. No. And you know, I think that gave him permission. Yes. To be himself mm -hmm. and to kind of um, um, just be mm -hmm. him. Just. A little more gay yeah you know totally <laughs> yes and uh of course like a year later him and seven guys got this awesome place down in la and went to pride <laughs> there course. and he had a blast mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah yeah classic he's, he's never become you know he's not the mm -hmm. you know uh that he, he never became the thing he was like i'm not that yeah but he's something else he's himself and yeah. he's very happy and embrace this amazing life. And he's got yeah. such an amazing support group. And mm -hmm. he's introduced me to like a gaggle of gays that are just <laughs> amazing. Yes. And one thing is, um, you know, and, and I know any group can have a bit of drama or some issues, but mm -hmm. they're so just, Chris and I have, have made the, this comment before. Now that we've been exposed to so many Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in the community. Yeah. The thing I love about gay people is, or transgender, or anyone that has gone past that and embraced themselves, mm -hmm. is they now know how to live in the moment and accept themselves. Yes. And there's this freedom that comes from that. Yes, there is. I mean, it's when you when you finally get past that, like that hump of, of your coming out or, or whatever it is for you it's different for everybody but whatever it is for said person once you finally get past that you you spend so much time worrying about what other people think and if they're if you look too gay when you're leaving the house or like um 
how how the fuck am I gonna come out to my parents or whatever? Once you pass whatever hump it is, you you appreciate life completely differently. Um, I do. Like every single morning, I wake up and I'm like, fuck yeah, I woke up this morning. Like, and it's it's a different zest for life that you get once you can openly do it. And I think it's something that a lot of people really take for granted. Um, their ability just to wake up and go on a date because for so long there's people like me or people like uh, in kids or even like your friend who couldn't do that, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it's a beautiful thing. We do yeah. a zest. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, it makes me think this, this, this whole discussion about, you know, this is the lesson that we all need to learn from the gay community. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of, you know, whenever we're feeling depressed, you know, it's because we won't accept ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not embracing our true self and, you know, embracing that moment and just being okay with where we're at in the world right now and just mm -hmm. living that. Yeah. You know, I think I shared with you that video from Vice News of mm -hmm. the bears yeah. in like Cape Cod or something <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's thousands of bears. Mm -hmm. And again, if anyone doesn't know the lingo, uh, a, a bear is a big, hairy gay. Me. Okay. I so, am a bear. Yeah, Tom's a bear. <laughs> if I were gay, I would be a you bear. You would be a bear, yeah. Okay. And uh, I have a really good friend, Alex, who's a bear, and I sent it to him too. And I said, you know, Alex, you and I and Tom need to go and do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they, it's just this, it's like the joyous convention I've ever seen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they just embrace their themselves yeah. and their culture and what they've created as as, yeah. as, as a group. And mm -hmm. there's just no judgment. No. And again, you know, I think that's something I, I, I teach in our course. One of the last thing I teach in my course is, you know, we need to let go of competition and judgment. Yes, it's so true. You know. Yes, 100%. And, and I'm not saying there's none of that in the gay community. No. Because of course there is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But I do think for you to endure and come out and get through all that, you've learned a, a, a lot to let go of those things. A lot. I mean, letting go, like, I mean, you are the master of letting go with everything that you do. But for me, um, it's letting go of, or for me, I had to let go of who I was and the expectations that people had of me prior to coming out in order to really appreciate the person that I ultimately was to become because this person who um is a resident artist and all of these things and and who's a radio guy and blah 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 blah, blah um these are things i never even thought about prior to coming out these are um these are beautiful opportunities that came to me because i chose to let go of that person because that person would have just held me back for fear of looking too gay yeah right so now that I'm kind of past that and these beautiful opportunities that come into my life, uh, I don't want to purely blame them on the fact that I, I let go of things, but they definitely wouldn't have come around if I hadn't. Well, I think too, it's your, if you can say to yourself, I'm going to take this huge risk mm -hmm. and em embrace this and just see where it goes mm -hmm. with your sexuality, mm -hmm. then taking on all these other <laughs> <laughs> jobs and experiences yeah. are nothing yeah. compared Be to that. It's true. and it, And more often than not you can perform better and do better at those sorts of things because you're not worrying about if you look too gay or whatever like yeah. you you get up and you get dressed and you go to work like every other normal person so it's i don't know it's like a it's a beautiful thing once you pass that hump and you get there and fuck, the, the world is your oyster at that point yeah right but it's not like over first just, mm. yeah, you just gotta get there right? you know it's interesting it reminds me of um uh over 10 years ago um, when Crystal started working with me, um, you know, she said to me later, she goes, you know, you had this uh, image of who you were trying to portray and who you felt you had to be. But she's like, I could see in you who you really were, mm -hmm. you know, and I could see this kind of, you know, a little wild and crazy and, you know, guy. And she's like, I just wanted to bring him out. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, and I, you know, she told me this after everything. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and I am like, yeah, I can see that. And I was, you know, cause you know, wearing, you know, a collared shirt and a sweater vest and yeah. you know, clean cut, like shaving and you know, all that every day to try to put this image on of this, 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, straight laced Mormon doctor yeah. who's out there to, you know, be everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can remember uh, going and getting my second tattoo because I got a tattoo when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, the crystals influence maybe. And, you know, uh -huh. that's at that point in my life where I was like, <laughs> why am I pretending to be this person? Yeah. And so I went and got that tattoo and I just was like, wow, mm -hmm. it's kind of badass. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, like this is, this is who I am. Why am I? Yeah. And of course it just led to one thing after another and totally changed my whole life. But, mm -hmm. um, it, I think uh, your transition has been beautiful since the day that I met you in my yeah, class and yeah. you were, cause it was fun. Cause it was almost like you would come on Saturday morning, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Cause I was more often than not hungover as a hell. Oh yeah. In that you look rough every once in a while. And, yeah. <laughs> and there was a few times I thought I was still drunk, but well, you know, it's fine. Um, there was a few times that you would come to class and then you would come in and you maybe look like a little sad or whatever. I don't know yeah. what was going on. I whatever, yeah. but, and then the music would start and you'd be like this, and then you'd be a completely yeah. different person. And Crystal would be there yeah. and you would have like the best time of your life for that hour. And then I wouldn't <laughs> see you again for a week. And I'm like, what? And then, so your progression is just so beautiful. Yeah. It's so cool to watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so neat. You know, I think we're all, you know, really everyone is put themselves in their own kind of closet. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, and they're, and I, th and I, th I see this a lot with patients. They're trying to live the life, live their life for someone else yeah. rather than themselves. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a parent mm -hmm. or that's a, a spouse or. Yes, 100%. Or they're trying to be this certain parent for their kids rather than just being themselves because they're afraid of, well, if I, you know, I've got to be this adult or my kids mm -hmm. will be badass if mm -hmm. I'm not perfect or no. ugh. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that turmoil, that internal struggle that we all go through mm -hmm. trying to be whatever for everyone else yeah. is just so toxic. Oh, it's so toxic to you as a person, to your friends, to your family, to your dog, to your kids, to whoever mm -hmm. it's, it's people will respond really well to authenticity more so than they'll respond to uh, planned appearance mm -hmm. really is kind of the way I can put it. Yeah. I was talking to my son on our podcast and he was talking about, I just don't like to talk about myself. <laughs> and I'm like, but you know what? When you talk about yourself, you show vulnerability and trust. Yeah. And you know, that, that, uh, when you, when you kind of hand over that vulnerability to someone else and that trust in them to mm -hmm. handle the, that, um, that intimacy yeah. of who you are. Yeah. It builds bonds and builds trust. Yeah. And you know, that's what builds that relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> okay, maybe, you know, he's, he's mm -hmm. getting better. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's interesting. I, I read this study and they were studying, um, you know, so you go to a new town or new neighborhood and you're trying to make friends. What is the one quality that, endears people to you or the, the one thing that people do that uh, helps build friendships and they had all these like little lists you know what number one was i don't know people who swear oh yeah okay i could see that <laughs> but i mean it's true though but again it's i think it just goes along that line of yeah. um you know I, I don't think we all need to like swear constantly no but when you have someone um who is willing and, and, you know, to just put that out there, hey, this is just who I am, this is who I speak. Yeah. You're probably gonna judge me, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. And when people hear that, they're just like, hmm, <laughs> this is different. Mm -hmm. Who's this person? Yeah. I, you know, like I remember years ago, I was treating one patient, she's like in her 80s. Right. And I was, I was doing some cupping on her IT band and mm -hmm. like that's that suction cup and I was sliding it. <laughs> And it, it hurts. Yeah, I believe real it. Bad. And so I'm, I'm doing it real quick on her leg and all of a sudden she's like grimacing. She goes, ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> and this is like this 80 year old grandma. I love that. And I'm just like, I like you. You're <laughs> awesome. Yep. You know, and, but again, I, I think as, you know, I don't know what age it is. All of a sudden people are like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm just yep. going to be who I am. Mm -hmm. 
Why aren't we like that all the time? <sighs> Societal pressure. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, yeah. whatever yeah. is, you know, because there's always, there's now ways for the society to watch you. And there was never, there never was that. And I think once you get to a certain threshold of age, a lot of where you start really caring less about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, blah, blah, blah. There's um, less ways for society to see what you're doing and to, to judge you and things like that. And that's kind of where, like, I found I've, I've been off social media really for like a couple of months, like maybe a month. I mean, the only time I will like talk to you, Instagram or whatever, and I'll still watch my messages. But like, I really like, try to stay off of it as much as I can, because a, I mean, uh, I freaking hate having to have like an image of what mm -hmm. people think about me. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's part of my job, yeah. right? Like my day to day to day, people look at me and they're like, oh, it's a radio guy and blah, blah, blah. And you constantly have to be on and you have to be blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And I like, I just don't give a shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. You know what I mean? Like, and I, <laughs> it's it's terrible because you, you do have to have some kind of goof when you're in radio, but yeah. I mean, shit, I don't care. Well, and right? it could be exhausting. It is so exhausting, you honestly. Know? Cause you, you know, I think there's this expectation, like, of course I have, you know, my, my business stuff mm -hmm. and mine and like, I hardly ever post the business stuff mm -hmm. anymore. I'm just so tired of it. And I pay a fellow, you know, to do it pre COVID and mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for him to kind of get ready to get back into work again. But, mm -hmm. um, I'd much rather pay someone to do that stuff for me have to do it. Makes and even sense. my personal one, you know, I rarely mm -hmm. post on it. Like when I'm on a, a trip or something, that's about the only time yeah. I'll, I'll share, hey, this is because patients always say, well, where did you go? They, they kind of like right. seeing that stuff. But I, I don't know. What do I got? Like 50 followers. <laughs> <laughs> so I never I only post what I want for me. Mm -hmm. I never post what is the expectation right you know yeah. because i do think like i always look at it as wow i could put a lot of effort into this but mm -hmm. who's gonna care like yo i have two sorry i have 230 followers oh my god you're an influencer oh, i'm an influencer influencer status <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know social media is a tough one it's a tough yeah. it's a tough thing it's a tough world to be a part of and it's, I mean, I don't know. I think if you want to know my biggest mental health struggle now, it's constantly being on all the time because you have to be, you feel like you need to be, right? So being on, is that the, the image of who Tom is on or is it just p always putting that, the, the positive vibes out and can never, yeah. sh sh you know, um, be down? I, so I think it's, so the, there's a, a little bit to unpack on this topic because, yeah. um, and I think you're, you'll I think see and, and maybe learn this as you go on with your podcast but when you when people listen to you they get a really specific vision of who you are as a person and people forget that when they see you in in uh or let's let's say radio when when they listen to you every single day for for me it's been three years and then they see you in public they forget that I've never met them before and they're just another face to me. Whereas to them, I mean a whole lot more to them. Yeah, yeah. Right? So when you meet someone, they have a really certain expectation of who you are. And because they've listened to you go, hey, what up? It's Tom, blah, 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 blah. They hear me and they, they think that's how I talk. Yeah. So it's really disappointing to them when I'm like, hey, how are you? What's up? Uh, and it's... They you, want Radio Tom 24-7. They want Radio Tom 24-7. And it's... It's sad because you you as a jock, you don't want to disappoint them, right? Like you want them to keep coming back to your show. So there's a whole lot of things that go through your head during this. Mm -hmm. And for me, when you're in small town radio, especially a place like Okotoks or the Foothills, where there's 50,000 people, give or take, mm -hmm. um, that's still small enough to to for a lot of people to know who you are and you, but still big enough for people to, you don't have no frigging clue who they are, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I think the biggest thing that I struggle with now is that, is, is, the constant fear or pressure of disappointing people when they meet me in person. Hmm. And it's a very weird thing to navigate because you also, um, you also, you don't want to, you don't want to disappoint them, but you also want to make it clear to them that that's your job and that's not who you are. And it's, yeah. you more often than not, when you meet somebody in like Walmart, it happens to me at fucking Walmart <laughs> almost every single time yeah. it's Walmart. And um, they just, I don't know. It, it's a very weird 
thing to, to go through. And because my friends obviously know one side of me and then you know a different side of me and then the listeners will know a different side and my coworkers know a different side. And a lot of times you, a lot for me, like they will are almost always the same person, but I don't know when I meet someone in Walmart and they want me to fucking be like, yo, what up? It's just, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's really difficult to, to navigate, but yeah, I don't know. It is tough. Like, you know, like I, uh, we have 4,000 patients. Mm -hmm. So Jesus. out of, you know, the town, the population of Okotoks, mm -hmm. you know, I can't remember. I think we worked out the math once of like, it's like one in five yeah. or something of every person in Okotoks is a patient of mine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I would find early on is our patient, you know, would grow and like, I can't even go anywhere in Calgary. Oh, I believe it. Without a patient see me. Mm -hmm. Okie dokes, everywhere I go, I see a patient. Yeah. And in Calgary. And I, I, initially it was just like, oh, crap. I can't. <laughs> they can't see me buying that. Mm -hmm. For <laughs> real. Or eating that. For real. Or <laughs> oh, I don't even get me into this conversation because yeah. I I can relate to that on yeah. so many levels. Yeah. Like, especially as a gay dude. Yeah. The things they, I need. They can't see me smoking that. For or... real. <laughs> oh my God. They can't see me buying condoms. Like, yeah. they, they can't see me buying any of these things. Like, yeah. And, and 10 liters of lube. Like, for, <laughs> for real. <laughs> oh, it's such a struggle. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it's that. But I think if if there were a cure or a, a treatment for this, it would be, you know, but it gets, but it's tough because on the radio you have to be a certain energy on the radio. Mm -hmm. Where on a if like I'm lucky on this podcast, I can just be myself. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Where you on radio, there's an expectation and an energy that has to be there. Yeah. Because everyone's tired, they're coming home, mm -hmm. they they want that from you yeah so i can see how that would be a lot tougher yeah because you know? because you can't just be authentic all the time when you have to because mm -hmm. i'm sure as actors there's this idea of oh yeah well i've seen you in this movie you're this person to me totally when that's not who they are at all yeah and they don't want to play that character for everyone exactly like, uh paul rubens Mm -hmm. You know, I love Paul Ru Rubens because like when I was a kid, Pee Wee Herman was my hero. <laughs> yeah. Why? I I don't know, but he yeah. was, and I absolutely adored Pee Wee Herman. Mm -hmm. And Paul Rubens is nothing like Pee Wee Herman. No. no. You know, he's, <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a funny guy. He's not a super funny guy, yeah. but he's like super low energy in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he is not. So, you know, I can't imagine people you know, going up and wanting to meet Pee Wee and it's not Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same view. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that's just something, mm -hmm. you know, stars like you just have to put up with. Oh, you know, <laughs> sometimes stars just have to burn. You know, it's, I get it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, you know what? It's still fun. It's only the very certain days where I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, yeah. you know, but. And it, you know, it's nice to be loved and adored, but there's days when you're just like, I just want to be me and by myself today. Mm -hmm. you know? So I get it. Yeah. There's some days you have to love and adore yourself. Yeah. Before you can let other people adore you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a tough life out here. <laughs> so that's your like, currently that's your like kind of main struggle mental, mental health wise is just mm -hmm. trying to not feel like you have to be on all the time mm -hmm. dealing with all that energy. Yeah. I just, I say to a lot of people, uh, <laughs> radio forces you to, uh, <laughs> develop bipolar disorder and then force you on how to manage it. Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, it really has nothing to do with bipolar disorder, but you do get a bit of a split personality, um, being on radio and, You'll notice, um, obviously, you know Michaela um, mm -hmm. and what she does. And so we spend a lot of time on the red carpets and all of the other fancy things that we do together. And then um, so she we kind of go through this together because we we both have it in very separate worlds. But um, you have that personality that everybody loves, knows, adores, blah, 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 online, offline, on the radio. And then you have your behind closed doors personality and more often than not, that's the one you enjoy being, but you know that your other one is what is going to keep you going, mm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. It, does it feel like this constant, um, 
you know, like race or work to maintain that, uh, you know, like the followers and the likes yeah. and all, all of that to maintain that image and that role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More so, I think, for Michaela than for me, mm -hmm. um, because they both they mean very different things to each of us. But um, it is it's it's a race almost always to keep up with e with both each other and each sides of our kind of personality. And um, I find it it's a huge, huge struggle for me. I don't know about her, but for me. <laughs> That's what is the biggest struggle. Mm. And so is that back and forth. It's like this constantly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So what what are you doing currently to help with that? Um <laughs> I'm making a lot of changes in my life, mm -hmm. which I will not get into here, but okay, yeah. there's a lot of changes Fair. um coming and happening that I basically I, and I don't know if this is a healthy coping method or not, but um I basically just chose to say fuck it for a really lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't make me happy, I'm not doing it. Yeah. And I think I'm turning 26 this year. I'm getting into my late 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I don't have time for things that don't make me happy anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I realize that not everybody has that luxury to say fuck it, but it to me, that's what is going to work for me. And I'm, I'm done, I'm out. I'm gonna make yeah. this change because it doesn't make me happy. I'm gonna make this change because it doesn't make me happy. And you as my friends and family can either come with me or you can get out the door. Yeah, It's kind of one or the other. And yeah. that's sort of what I'm doing, but I do not recommend it to anybody. Well, I think <laughs> I think there's millions of people in the world right now that are doing that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's they've lost everything. So yeah. why not? Seriously. You know, if you have to start over, mm -hmm. why not yeah. be what you want to be? Mm -hmm. I know lots of people yeah. who have bought vans. Yeah, and traveling the world in vans. Yeah, because they can. So, and I mm -hmm. love that. I want to do. Yeah, that. yeah. But I need a big van. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a Mini Cooper, so <laughs> you know, cool. Get a trailer. <laughs> I can pull a trailer with that Mini Cooper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I'm gonna paint it rainbow. Yeah. It's gonna be the greatest. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this has been really interesting because I think. Uh, um, to get perspectives that I just don't understand, mm -hmm. you know, you know, your perspective, you know, growing up through all that. And I've talked to friends, you know, about it too. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that my two sons haven't had to go through that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I left the church and, you know, did all those things Yeah. before they got to the age mm -hmm. where they were, you know, questioning yeah. things and didn't have anyone to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one thing I think is really interesting, like my oldest son, who's, um, uh, he's bisexual mm -hmm. and he had, I think he was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. and I was still a Mormon at this time, but he said to me one day, we were in the car and he said to his mom and I, dad, I'm an atheist. Huh. And I'm like, number one, you're 10. <laughs> How the fuck do you know that word? <laughs> <laughs> like, where did that mm -hmm. come from? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Okay, tell me about it. What what do you what's an atheist? Right. You know, I wanted him to be able to express to me yeah. what he thinks he is. And he says, I, I don't believe in God. I don't want to go to church. Well, right. I think this is all just a big joke. Huh. <laughs> and he's ten. Jesus. And I'm like Okay. Uh -huh. And at that point I'm still trying to be that person, you know? And right. we were, so initially I'm like, oh crap. Mm hmm What what am I gonna do? What yeah. are people gonna think? All this but then I was just like no, I said, that's okay, bud. Mm -hmm. You can be that. That's great. You, you feel that way. But for now, we're still just going to go to church, yeah. you know, in the meantime. And you're welcome to believe whatever you want and mm -hmm. do whatever you want later. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, we're going to do this. Okay. And he's like, okay. Okay. And, um, <laughs> you know, and then later he came out to me mm -hmm. and he was not at all embarrassed no. To just tell me that and mm -hmm. talk freely about That's it. That's because you opened, you you laid the foundation for that moment. But I'm so grateful. Yeah. Like I never planned for that or right. knew where that was going. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't imagine, uh, you know, even my, you know, my middle son who's gay, um, you know, he deals with anxiety and depression enough already. Yeah. Like, I'm afraid I would have lost him. Mm-hmm if he didn't know that he could right. just be whoever he wants right. and he's going to be loved and supported. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Totally. It's, um, you know. You won the lottery, man. Oh, I got great kids. <laughs> you yeah, have fantastic yeah, kids. Really yeah, there's there's this, um, I watched this little video from Vice the other day, and it was uh, Mama Dragons. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Mama Dragons? No. So, again, let, we're going to go back to Utah. This is just the, <laughs> my Mormon roots here. Yeah. But there's this organization in Utah called Mama Dragons. Mm -hmm. And their mothers, they'll be like a surrogate mom to any gay kid. That's cool. Who's Mormon. Right. Um, and a lot of them have lost their sons. They can, killed themselves or, right. you know. And, or they their kids are gay and they were able to save them. Right. And now they're being supportive and you know just yeah and there's like they're all over the place now mm -hmm. and they're just you know they're like you know my faith is important to me but my child comes first yes and unfortunately faith has always taught this thing that no god goes first mm -hmm. like you know and again i'm gonna um you know put my little like <laughs> <laughs> everyone <laughs> thinks their God goes first. Yes. And everyone's got a different one and all mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, sorry, but your child is real. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're here right now in front of you. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, you're not going to see your God for a long time. Exactly. But you see your child every day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but they come before your faith. And preach, sis, yeah, say it again. Yeah. You like, love them, you support them, let them do whatever, yes. build them up. You can still have your faith and do all that. Mm -hmm. And if your faith choose, says that, nope, you love your child too much, you can't be in this faith anymore, Yeah. then fuck your faith. Literally, yes, it's so true. Yeah. Uh, it's so, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, sorry, I'm sure that offended some people and hurt some, but I'm sorry. You know, the, the, the suicide rates are very real and, you know, what yeah. it does to them mentally is so harmful, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we're seeing the suicide rates are dropping mm -hmm. in gay youth, mm -hmm. but they're still very high in transgender kids. Yes. Yes. I'm and, so glad you said that. And what is so weird is we're seeing people like, oh, well, I can accept a gay person now because now they know someone who's gay or whatever mm -hmm. but they're just like and and i was one of those people right you know right but you're just like i don't know about this whole transgender thing oh, but we yeah. don't know about it so we judge it right yeah that's true i uh this <clears throat> this is such a melting pot to get into of a conversation to get into with with trans um people and trans folk um I don't even see why you would need to judge it if you don't even know about it. I mean, and this is kind of just my own thoughts on it. I, um, I have many friends that are trans, and honestly, I like I don't I wouldn't feel any differently about them. Like, like to me, they're just they're they're human. They're a person, and however that they, um, all they're doing is changing. Their, it's like. It's like, remember when you painted your flex in Galaxy? Yeah. That's, that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. You changed the outside to match yeah. what you wanted and how you felt on the inside. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. it. That there was there really is no difference mm -hmm. to it. And I think um, if every person in the world just approached uh, trans people with the same excitement and trendiness that they approach gay people with now, yeah. the world would be a much happier place. And we're only five years away from that. Yeah. Max. Yeah. Because everything yeah. is in these, mm -hmm. you know, transitions where, yeah. and, and, and it's accelerating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yes, um, you know, gay and lesbians, you know, uh, they had to, um, you know, uh, forge the path mm -hmm. for transgendered people. Mm -hmm. um, and they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Some, and I, but I remember hearing stories and reading articles about how, like, initially, gays were not very kind to transgender people mm -hmm. because they're like, don't fuck this up for us. Mm -hmm. You're too weird. You're, yeah. you, you yeah. know, and it didn't come hand in hand. No. And, and if Which I'm being frank, it still doesn't. There's a lot of transphobia within the LGBTQ community. Um, there's a lot of just phobia in general with, with, within it it's there's like there's ageism and there is sexism that that is that exists and it's very bad within the community but um people forget more often than not that 
the gay rights movement, the gay rights civil movement, started with a trans woman of color. Mm-hmm. So they, they, yeah, and she fucking kicked ass. She fucking kicked ass. Marsha yeah. P. Johnson is yeah. one of the coolest fucking people in the world. And yeah. once you kind of research and get into who she was as a person, and even uh, her best friend, I believe her name was Sylvia, um, they, they changed the world as they know it. And so honestly, there, there's, uh, yeah. I, I, I'll ramble about it, but you know that's what uh, with all the you know everyone complaining about the riots <laughs> and you know the, the yeah. damage and everything like this and that never solves anything. I'm like, it 100 solves it does everything. every time. It solves everything. You know because it was the um, uh, the Blackstone Stonewall Stonewall riots. You know that mm-hmm. 50 you know, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And it's. It's been one thing after another that when it's that, um, you know, that righteous indignation, that self-assertion of standing up and saying, yeah. I'm not going to be bullied anymore. I'm not going to take this. Really? And it happens again and again and again. And it's what changes society. Yeah. And it, you know, uh, it looks ugly initially and people mm-hmm. don't like it, but it makes change. For real. And so you cannot judge these people <laughs> for, for burning a Walmart <laughs> when... <laughs> their brothers and sisters are getting shot in the streets for real so you can't judge that and and i think too um like really interesting again my middle son who's gay um his first relationship um was with a transgendered boy amazing and i remember talking to him about it because originally he told me he was pansexual Mm -hmm. and he's like 10 or 12 at this point right (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know what is going on with these kids <laughs> saying these these things that I don't even know much about. Man, and you I'm make like, the bed by being so cool about it. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like, hey, what's that? Mm-hmm. I've I don't know that word. Right. And he's like, oh well, Dad, it just means that you love whoever you love. Yeah. You know, you could fall in love with anyone. It's just if there's that connection and that love, you love them. Yeah. And his this is him at like 11 or whatever it was. <laughs> Amazing. And I was like. Okay, that's super cool. Mm-hmm. And um, and then he said to me, he goes, you know, Dad, in like 10 years, gender's not going to be anything. <laughs> it's true. We're not going to be talking about gender. No. It's not going to be this thing that we're questioning or wondering. People are just going to be people. Mm. And we're just going to love whoever we fall in love with. It's not going to be that thing. And, and I think that's... That concept that he taught me at 11 is what helped me change my approach to transgendered Mm -hmm. folk because it was just like, because I think we think there's just this, uh, um, you know, before there was, you know, black and white, male and female, Mm -hmm. right? And then we're like, okay, well, now there's there's, uh, straight men and women, and then there's lesbians and gays. Mm -hmm. And we're, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. That's too many boxes, but it's only four boxes. I'm cool with this. Right. And then it was, okay, now there's, you know, straight, gay. Now we have transgender. Now there's, you know, three boxes. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, there's a transgender man, transgender female. And, but it's, there's like endless boxes. <laughs> there is. There's a lot. Um, because the whole thing is, is you just need to be you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're a little different. Like, I, there's this post that came up, I don't know, it was on Instagram or Facebook the other day, and it was all these different flags now. Mm, yep. for all And all these different terms. And so there's a part of me going through there, am I in one of these? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. because I, I remember um, my best friend, you know, who came out, we're like, you know, we're like identical twins right. in personality and just the things we love. Mm-hmm. And I remember we went on a trip with him and his wife Mm-hmm. And Greg Crystal for my birthday and we traveled across country and and uh I remember we were driving home, Crystal's like You know he's gay, right? Oh and I'm like No he's not. Yeah She's like Jared, he is totally gay. And I'm like, No. Cause he I don't even think he really even knew that. But right. he um uh I was sitting there and I'm like, No, he's just like me. He's like gay in every way but the bedroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she goes, now I'm I'm pretty sure. Someday he is going to meet the sweetest guy mm-hmm. and we're going to go on these epic trips and it's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But it just, you know, we have this idea of, 
you know, who yeah. everyone is or what that yeah. bubble is. But to learn from my son that, you know, dad, it, we're not going to care about this no. eventually. And I don't know why people have this obsession on knowing if someone has a vagina or a penis. And Ugh. like, oh, yeah. you've changed. Okay. Do you still have it? Mm -hmm. Do you not? Would you ever ask a straight person about their penis or vagina? Never. And I, why we think, yeah. okay, you've done this. So it is now under like public purview for everyone to know mm -hmm. what is the status of your genitals. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. blows my mind. For real. It's it's absolute insanity to me, honestly. I, I like I said, I have trans friends and I, <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know what they have. I don't care. I care about like here mm -hmm. and that's that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be too bold and say something like this, but um, it's because I don't think anybody is either on one side or the other of this spectrum. And I think that they need validation for their own sexuality. And that's why they ask things like, you know, do you have a dick or do you have a vagina or do you have this, that or the other? Mm -hmm. It's because a lot of people, they, nobody is, is 100% straight. Just like not everybody is 100% gay. I know a lot of gay guys that, <clears throat> excuse me, are attracted to women in some sort of weird way. And it's not my place to judge them, but nobody is strictly on a, anywhere on either side of the spectrum mm -hmm. uh, on the rainbow, shall we say? Yeah. Um, and I think it's, that's just, that's where that comes from. And I, ugh, I hate it. I think yeah. it's weird and slimy and I don't think we should ever ask anybody about their genitals. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, we need to get past. And, and I think, <laughs> you know, they're so desperate to make their world seem safe mm -hmm. and to understand mm -hmm. it, things. Yeah. They don't care to understand that particular transgender person. No, they don't. They just want, you know, answers it's, to make their world a little clearer on what's going on there rather than a, just being sensitive to this person and yeah. accepting them for who they are. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, a kink it's super for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's a lot, a lot of Because you know that guy that's asking? You know what's on his browser history? Chicks with dicks, man. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Dang, is that ever a touchy subject with so many people? Not yeah. with me, but yeah. it's that's exactly what it is. And that's, <laughs> it's just, I, God, it's so weird. It's so weird, man. I don't know, but it's, yeah. I don't know. It's what it is. You know, through our conversation, one thing I think that it's really, you know, brought home to me and helped help me kind of understand you know, uh, all that we've talked about is that it's, you know, we, you know, us and everyone, everyone who's listening to this, mm -hmm. okay, all three people, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. Yeah. But everyone who listens to this or watches it on YouTube, mm -hmm. my invitation is that we are all to come out of our own closets. Yeah. And whether that's letting go of, you know, um, a religion that doesn't fit you or a gender that doesn't fit you mm -hmm. or a sexuality preference that doesn't fit you or, um, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we are too busy trying to conform mm -hmm. and it's causing depression. Yes. It's causing mental health issues mm -hmm. because we're not authentic and accepting ourselves. Mm -hmm. One thing I, we always start, you know, at the, at the beginning of my course and whatever I teach things, it's a little about, we talk about the Tao. Mm -hmm. And the Tao is the way or our path. Right. It's not, there's not one path. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's the problem I have with the religion is it's always like, nope, yeah. I've got the right idea. Mm -hmm. There's only one right path and you know, sneaky God is like, I'm going to make hundreds of religions and you have to figure out which one it is, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And right. they all say the same things and they all say that it was revealed to them in the same way, but <laughs> there's not one single yeah. path. No. It is your path. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's finding your, and you know, your, yeah. your Tao is that smooth sailing path. Totally. So if, if things don't feel smooth, mm -hmm. if things are difficult or uncomfortable, it's because you're not following your Tao. Yeah. You're following someone else's. Mm -hmm. Whether that's 
uh, the religion or your family or your yeah. partner or Instagram's image of how you're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, follow the advice of my good friend Tom and just say, fuck it. Fuck it. And embrace yes. your path yeah. in your way. Seriously. Yeah. I, I think too, there's, um, <clears throat> when we're trying to figure out who that is, mm -hmm. you know, where we're supposed to go next on our path. Mm -hmm. Another important concept in Taoism is the concept of Wu Wei. And Wu okay. Wei is this, I, it's, it's translated as emptiness. Oh. And how, um, you know, like uh, um, for us to receive anything in our lives, there has to be space to receive it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. the cup has to be empty for it to be filled. Right. And we want to hold on to all these things. Huh. Our identity, uh -huh. our past, our, you know, yeah. that expectation of other people yeah. to feel safe. Mm -hmm. But we can't, we can't embrace or move forward on that, our Tao, that path mm -hmm. until there's emptiness. Yes. And so we have to drop stuff. We have to quit things. We have to let things go. Yeah. It, it's not that we're a quitter. Yeah. It's it doesn't fit us mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. And it may have fit us at one time. Yeah. And that's okay. But it doesn't anymore. But the thing is to think that our... You know, us as individuals is static. Mm -hmm. right. I am this person. I will always be this person. I'm going to die this person. No. Every, like month to month, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. And you, your personality switches and changes a little. Your understanding, what you accept. You know, yeah. for me, um, you know, like I am often embarrassed of the beliefs I had and the things that I've said to gay people in the past. Right. Like yeah. sometimes it'll come up in my head. And I just feel <clears> disgusting <throat> right. and I want to slap myself. But you weren't educated. And, yeah. And, but I have to understand that that was a different person. Yeah. That's not me. Mm -hmm. That was someone else. It was a different time. Yeah. Also. And, right. and we need to understand this with everyone that, you know, people like hold grudges and won't forgive and don't like things you posted on Twitter 20 years change. ago. Yeah. 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 Like the, how I've been able to change that gives me hope that I know that yeah. other people can. Yeah. And so, we just need to continue to express love and acceptance and give these people that opportunity yeah. to change go. And Crystal did that for me. Right. And she kind of guided me along and I would still kind of like mm -hmm. push a little bit of religion on her every now and then. And mm -hmm. she was very forgiving and trusting, loving right. and was able to kind of guide and pull me out of that dark place and right. let me be me. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. And I think we need to be those people for others. Yeah. Um, 100%. Whether that's someone who's uh, gay or transgendered or just someone who's depressed that's yeah. too busy trying to be yeah. somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's so true. If you're, I mean, it's once you go through things, I think you're doing yourself and other people a disservice that if you don't try to not try to teach them, but if you don't help them along, we all have to help each other along through life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Along this really cra crazy thing that life is like, I mean, I think you helped me a lot. I think maybe I've done something for you. I don't know, but of course, that's of it, it, if we didn't do that, it would mm -hmm. be a disservice to each yeah. other and to this relationship and friendship that we have. Like, yeah. I think um, if whoever is out there and, and listening and watching the three people, which I think there'll be like 3000, but okay, it's different, it's, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that, uh, think about in your the people in your life that you can help that maybe are giving you tiny little signs that they need help and how can you help them think about things that you've gone through and whatever else and maybe like to me there's so many people on a daily basis that i just text and i go i love you mm -hmm. because that's how they need help or yeah. that's how maybe i feel like i have the capacity to help them and i think if we're, if you're not if you're out there and you're thinking you're not helping anybody right now then you're not like then figure it out get on to whoever yeah. in your life you can help yeah. right yeah. and then <clears throat> you know you don't have to solve anyone's problems <laughs> You just have to love and accept them for who they are. Yeah, just help them through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like then again, that's um, like one of my big heroes, other than Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Is Mr. Rogers. I love Mr. Rogers. And it was because he, you know, he accepted everyone for who they were. Mm -hmm. He loved them in that moment. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, he was with that person mm -hmm. and, you know, gave them all of his love yeah. and attention. <laughs> and I think, you know, if we ever, and again, you know, it takes a special person to be that guy. Yep. yep. But even if we can be that person for one person, not yep. everyone. Mm -hmm. But if you can be a Mr. Rogers yeah. for a few people in your life, or, mm -hmm. or even if you do it 30% of the time, yeah. you know, 
what it does to people's self-esteem and support yeah in, in their lives yeah so yeah yeah be a good neighbor you're helping the world become a better place yeah that's awesome yeah this was a lot of fun tom yeah it was Thank awesome you. i learned a ton more about yourself um yeah i learned know, a lot about and, you <laughs> and, and and i do think you know and, and for me like when i first met you you know it was very obvious to crystal and i that does he know he's gay <laughs> and and i'm sure you were in that position you probably yeah. were out to a few people but not to everyone mm -hmm. but um you know uh you know and and this wasn't something that i necessarily planned but i just like you know i just like tom mm -hmm. you know and i and i want to let him know i like him and think he's awesome and you know encourage him to continue yeah. to be himself but i do think you know again i I swear, one of the keys for people accepting, whether it's gays or LGBT, you need to know someone. Yeah, yeah, it's it true. It changes you when you get to know someone and you That's true. respect and love someone who is. Yeah. And you're one of those people for me. Mm -hmm. And I think your influence not only helped my best friend, mm -hmm. my kids, right. and I want to thank you for that. Oh, thank because you. Because I do think your, yeah. my experience and you know interactions with you mm -hmm. helped me to see that Hey, if my kid is gay, mm -hmm. that's okay. Because yeah. Tom's awesome and he's gay. <laughs> thank you. Oh you know, my we're... God. So I <sighs> wanted to th say that and, and say thank you. Because it, I do think you had, you know, had an influence on me and thank eventually you. had influence on my children. Thank so thanks. You. <laughs> okay. Right. So we'll oh. end on that before I start making Tom cry. Seriously. Um, but yeah, so um thank you again tom thank you um i will uh we'll be putting these out regularly because i do think the more conversations we have about mental health mm -hmm. and give people tools like yeah you know your tool of journaling and yeah. uh you know you know uh, coming out and embracing yourself mm -hmm. is a tool you know for everyone to, yeah. to find peace and to uh you know mm -hmm. um, deal with their own mental health yeah and and please don't deal with it alone no, you call know. me. Yeah, call Jared. Okay, get some help. Send us a message, comment, whatever, yeah. and 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 we'll give you some ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, um, yeah, there that's where we're at. And you know, if we can all, you know, it's all about receiving and letting go in our lives. And uh, you know, if it if it doesn't serve you, let it go. For real. Make some space to embrace you and uh, the yeah. things in your life that's going to bring you yes. some joy and make you feel a little yeah. more like you. Yes, it's yeah. so true. Yeah. Like, right. fuck, fuck it. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Last words from Tom. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Everyone dude. have a lovely uh, week. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week with another podcast. We've got uh, some amazing guests lined up. I'm so excited to yeah. have some chats with them. And um, I definitely think uh, Tom will be coming back again. We'll talk about this. I hope so. Some more stuff. Awesome. Yay. Thanks everyone. And uh, you know, be that support to one another. Be a little Mr. Rogers. Love ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us for our first um, episode of the Five Elements Letting Go podcast. It was a blast hanging out with Tom, laughing and just, um, you know, just sharing that wisdom of what he went through as a young man. And you know, pulling those two together really made me think about, you know, this process that you are going through and everyone else is going through of our depression, our anxieties, our mental health issues can often almost be related to this internal fight within us where we're trying to be someone else. We're trying to be that person that everyone expects us to be. And rather than embracing who we really are. Whether that's someone who is gay, someone who's transgendered, someone who is, um, you know, like my case, someone who is in a religious organization that did not fit them and did not bring them any peace or happiness at all. And I think there is um, that feeling of being trapped for almost all of us. When we're not on that path, when we're not walking our true path, we feel imbalanced, we feel trapped, alone, and lost. And I know you can find your path. 
and you'll find that peace that comes from embracing who you are and living your life and you know finding that way to find your peace and bring peace to others that way that you can live within your own skin and in your own peace so that you can be a support and help to others when we are struggling in that place of not finding our peace then we can't be a support to others and i know we can all be that person but when we have that strength and balance within we can share that strength and balance with others you can do that you can be that person i know it's within you and your struggle may be at a different level than others but there's always that level of trying to uh, impress others or you know live that life for someone else so my invitation for you at the end of this podcast is to find your path find those things that bring you peace that serve you and live and embrace that life and you will find peace and joy i promise and it's not constant it never is but it is that life of just feeling accepted by yourself nothing brings you greater joy and power than loving yourself and you can love you and others love you and that love only grows when you find your own peace so again my invitation find your path find your peace and life will get so much better i promise it's not a magic pill but it is just this peace and understanding that i know you can achieve and i invite you to do it and hey if you need help if you got questions send them to me we'll talk about it if you have questions for the podcast let us know if you want a little more guidance and some steps on how to let go and find that peace just check the description below and there's my course uh, the five elements letting go it is uh, 10 years in the making and it's going to help anyone professional or patient help others and help themselves thank you so much love you and i appreciate this time that you have shared with me by taking the time to watch this video and listening to our podcast and uh good luck everyone good luck and love you all peace Thank you.